Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I got a new telescope and I have been dying to show this to you guys. And if everything goes according to plan, today we're going to do the first field test and if weather holds, also the first light frames of it. Allow me to give you a very quick tour of this thing. So this is a Mead LXD 75. I got this second hand. It's a six inch Newtonian and got a focal length of 750 millimeters with an f-stop of five. This is a pretty nice scope. Um, I haven't aligned anything obviously as the second sun just set over there. It's beautiful out here, by the way. I just want to give you a quick tour. It's a very standard Newtonian setup. There's not a whole lot to it. However, there's been a few modifications done to it. The previous owner installed this, which is a unstep controller. That means all the little motors here have been replaced with upgraded, uh, with upgraded motors. So hopefully that should, uh, should help it a lot. And this thing here, this thing here is cool because we're going to power this up in a second and I can connect to this remotely from my phone either via Wi-Fi, via Bluetooth, and then we can control the telescope completely from the phone. And we're not gonna need the hand controller at all. This is a pretty cool setup. Other than that, again, there's not a whole lot to it. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty standard. We have our, we have our finder scope in here. There's a light here that we can turn on in case we want to, uh, uh, so we can actually see what's going on in there. There was a lot of additional accessories that came with this scope, um, like additional eyepieces. He had like a very nice planetary five millimeter eyepiece. Um, two collimators, uh, ND filters for moon shots, loads of stuff were included in this. So um, I think I'm just going to try to fire this thing up and uh, then we're going to see if we can get the whole tracking phone thing to work. Here we just have a list of, uh, of Bluetooth connections and we can see here at the bottom we have the, uh, the unstep. Then I think we should be connected. So in this app it's pretty simple actually. We have a bunch of different like we have a uh what do we have in here actually we can set some date we can start aligning if you want to do that all kinds of things can we do like oh look at that at the bottom here we can do automatic meridian flips that's pretty neat i like that but i think obviously it's still too light for me to do any kind of proper alignment of it so we're just going to pretend so let's just say we want to look at uh, something relatively close to the north star uh like m81 should be pretty close i think so if we click in on that, and now we should be able to just click go to here. And we'll look at that. The telescope is now moving to the target. Assuming it was aligned, of course, but you get the point. And there you have it. And with the keypad down here, the north, south, east, west thing, we could now do fine adjustments if we're not perfectly lined up. And then we could click the sync, and that would kind of be part of the whole alignment process as well. Um, so that's a pretty neat app. I really, I mean, it's simple. Um, you can connect this to, um, if you have the paid version of Stellarium, the Stellarium app, you can just connect the telescope to that as well. Right now is actually the perfect time to do flats. Sun has just set, nice, like, even sky. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get some flats shot on this, so I have that ready. And then I'm just gonna wait for it to be proper dark, and then we're gonna, hopefully the weather holds and we can do some lights. So while we wait for darkness, um, my target for tonight is M81. This is why I chose it before. Should be nice and high in the sky tonight. Um, I just have it open here in, um, in Telescopius. And I just want to kind of give a rough estimate of what it should look like through the scope. So uh, I've already set it up in here with our um, Meet Newtonian, the uh, LXD75, with all the stats here. And for the camera, we're just gonna go with the, uh, with the Canon RA, which is the camera I brought with me today. One thing I like to do is because I know if I can crop this down to down to 1.6 um, cropping and still keep full 4K resolution. So I like to do uh, just to check it with a 1.6 times crop, which would actually be quite nice. I probably want to actually put a bit of an angle on this, something like 20 degrees if I can uh, if I can do that because I think that will 
it'll be a little bit more nicely framed. Um, so if I can get something like that, I might just try to center it on, 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 on M85 tonight. But for now, at least, that's the target. This is what I'm hoping to see. Um, so should be around, I think, 30 more minutes, and then we are into, uh, into civil darkness. And uh, then we should begin to see some stars. We can begin to do the alignment of the, um, of the telescope. Unfortunately, 30 minutes after this clip was recorded, clouds began to show up on the horizon. When it was dark enough for me to begin to do an alignment and do the first test shots, well, clouds were now well overhead. And with more looming on the horizon, it was clear that it wouldn't be tonight that I would do any serious photography. But the night was not a total loss. I did manage to get the thing polar aligned. I learned how to get the time and location updated in the computer. I also checked that the telescope could slew to a target and that it could track it accurately. This is where I thought this video was going to end. However, yesterday, um, I actually got another chance to get the scope out and to get some first light frames. The weather seems to be pretty okay. It was a bit of a cloud when I was heading out, but according to all weather forecasts, they should clear up. Now, since the first part of this video was, was shot, I actually got a um, the coma corrector for the telescope, and therefore I shot some new um, some new flats, I shot new darks, um, new biases, and of course made sure to take all my notes and write it down in my Cosmic Field Notes book, which you can get at deepspacebooks.com, by the way. So I proceeded to go through the alignment procedure, and as I was slewing to the first alignment star, I thought I might as well just do a, a quick focus now that I have a bright star to focus from. And this is where I hit the first snack. You see, no matter how far I pushed in that focuser, I just couldn't get it in focus. And if I put the focuser further out, it just got further out of focus. So I just wasn't able to get it in focus, something I haven't spotted on the first evening I was out with this scope because I didn't take any pictures with it. I was merely doing like visual astronomy, just checking that it would track and checking that I could actually make it to slew to a target and stuff like that. So I reached out to some of the extremely knowledgeable guys that are luckily on, uh, on my Discord. There are some really, really nice, helpful guys over there that's been helping me a lot. There's a link for the server in the description or here on screen if you're interested. And we talked it over on the evening while I was out there and uh, we actually figured out that this tube here, this extension tube, that comes out of the focuser, it can be unscrewed. So it was a pretty simple fix. Just unscrew this extension tube and move the entire like, camera assembly. That was a good, like, I'm gonna say 50 millimeters. I could move it in closer to the optical tube. I did that and I was finally able to focus. And this is where I got a little excited. I began to like miss some critical steps. I did focus it as good as I could by just by punching in the live view and getting the stars as small as I could. Um, I did have a Batnoff mask with me, but for some reason I never really put it on because I think I just got a little excited. I just want to begin to, to collect images, right? Um, so I missed some steps and I should probably have followed the like, on-site checklist that I've even written myself and put it at page one, or actually page two of the Cosmic Field Guide, which was also in my bag. <laughs> so, I probably should have done that, but, well, could have, should have, did. Now, this is the resulting picture I got. Now, I know this is not something, like, out of the ordinary. It's slightly out of focus, as you can see. The stars are, well, quite big, and, uh, well, the galaxy is also a little... Um, a little blurry, so it's by no means a award-winning photo of uh, of M81. But I'm pretty happy with it. This was the first night with a new scope, and despite some challenges, I actually came home with a with a with a picture of a galaxy. But overall, but overall, I think this was a successful test, and there's definitely going to be more content coming with this telescope as I get more used to it and learn all its little quirks. So click the subscribe button to stay tuned for that. One of these two pictures were taken with this telescope right here. The other one was taken with my phone. Cameras, telescope, field wheel, focuses, camera rotators, various switches, guide scopes, weather observation devices, domes, all that kind of thing can be controlled from within one software.